Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video, we're going to talk about linear combinations. We'll have two main goals for this video. First, we're going to define the terms span and linear combination. And second, we're going to have a technique that will allow us to determine if w is in the span of two other vectors, u and v. We'll start off with the definition of linear combination. It says, given some vectors, v1, v2, dot, 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 vp, and rn, so these are all n-dimensional vectors, and some scalars, c1, c2, so on and so forth, that the vector we get by adding multiples of the vectors, so the vector we get y that's equal to c1 times v, the vector v1 plus c2 times v2 plus dot 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 cp vp, is a linear combination of those vectors with the weights being the scalars. So that's the formal definition. Now let's look at an example. So if u is equal to the vector 1, 1, and v be equal to the vector negative 1, 2, then since 3 times the vector 1, 1 plus 2 times the vector negative 1, 2 is equal to the vector 1, 5, I would say that 1, 5 is a linear combination of u and v. So linear combinations are just when we are adding multiples of vectors together. Now what does this mean graphically? Well, if I plot the vector u, that's the vector 1, 1, so it would look something like that, and the vector v, which is negative 1, 2, so that would look like something like this vector. And then I want to plot this linear combination of the two vectors, 3 times u plus 2 times v. Well, the result was 1, 5. That is this vector. And to get that vector, I took 3 of the u vector, and I'm adding 2 of the vector v. So I can add vectors by putting them tip to tail. So when I add 2 of those vectors v, it's like adding 2 of these. And sure enough, that gets me to that, that sum of the vectors. Now, of course, I don't have to take 3 times u and 2 times v. I could take any multiple of u plus any other multiple of v, and this would also be a linear combination. So what if I had taken 4 times u plus 2v? Well, that would just be one more value of u, and then my two values of v, and I would have this at this point. And I could, once again, I could take any multiple of u. Any multiple of u would just give me any vector along this line. And if I'm adding any vector, any multiple of v, I would be adding any vector along these lines. And so the result is sort of a grid system. And this tells me how many of u and how many v I would need to get to any given point. So any point I want to get to, for instance this point, I could take some multiple of u and some multiple of v to get to get this vector. And so this is kind of a visual representation of taking linear combinations. Now we can see in that last example is there was a lot of different possibilities for outcomes of linear combinations. And so if we gather up all the possible linear combinations of these two vectors, u and v, we call that the span of u and v. So in this case, what we saw in that last example was that the span of 1, 1 and negative 1, 2, the span of those two vectors, u and v, that we used in the previous example, was equal to r2. Because what we saw in that geometric representation is that I could get to any vector in r2 any point in that plane, I could find some linear combination of these two vectors that would take me to that, that point value. So now we've gone through the definitions of linear combination and span. Let's look at some questions that we might be asked regarding those two terms. So here are three questions, and we're going to go through them one at a time. It says, if u is equal to the vector 1, 2, describe the span of u. Well, now I have the span of just one vector. So the span of this one vector should just be any multiple of this one vector. So first we'll plot 1, 2, and we'll get this vector. And if I multiply this vector by some number, all I'm doing is scaling it. So all the possible scalings of this vector would just be any vector along this line. So if we're going to describe the span of u, it would be all the vectors that lie on this line. Now what about the span of u and v, where v is the vector 1, 0? The vector 1, 0 is this vector. 
And so taking linear combinations of these two vectors, I'm once again describing a, a grid system here. So if I take one of u and one of v, I would get to here. Two of u, two of v, I would get to here. And once again, I could just build that out and I could see that there's any point. For instance, if I want to get to this point, how would I get to this point? Well, I would take some multiple of u and maybe negative some value of v. But I would be able to get to that point, thus this vector. So describing the span of these two vectors would once again be equal to r2. Another way to talk about uh, the span of these two vectors, I could ask specifically, um, is 3, 4 in the span of u and v? And that's saying, is there some linear combination of u and v that get me to 3, 4? Is there some number value x1 and some number value x2 that I could say x1 times u plus x2 times v is equal to 4? So this equation, finding a value for x1, x2 that would satisfy this equation is giving the specific weightings that would show us that 3, 4 is a linear combination of u and v. So how do we find out what x1 and x2 could be? Well, if we write out this vector equation, we have x1 times the vector u plus x2 times the vector v. And this is supposed to be equal to the vector 3, 4. Now, if we just do our basic vector operations, when I multiply a vector by a scalar, I just multiply each of the components by that scalar. That would give me this result. I know how to add two vectors together. If I add two vectors, I just add their components. So the sum over here would be x1 plus x2 and 2x1 plus 0. It should still be equal to a 3, 4. And the last statement I see now is that I can say that two vectors are equal. This vector is equal to this vector if and only if their components are equal. So if these two things are equal, then the first component should be equal to the first component. If I write that as its own equation, I would get x1 plus x2 must be equal to 3. And the second component must be equal. So 2x1 must be equal to 4. But when I see that expression, I say, wait a second, this is just a linear system. And so trying to find the correct weights to show that 3, 4 is in the span of UV, UV is the exact same question as saying, is there a solution to this linear system? And I know how to find out if there's a solution to this linear system. My first step would be to write out the augmented matrix, which in this case would be 1, 1, 3, and 2, 0, 4. And to find out if there's a solution to the system, I'd want to put this into row echelon form. So to do that row operation, I would take R2 equal to R2 minus 2 times R1. Row 1 would stay the same. In row 2, if I took R2 minus 2 times R1, I would get 0 minus 2, and I'd get 4 minus 2 times 3, which would be negative 2. Now that it's in row echelon form, I can identify the pivot columns. I have a pivot column in the first column and the second column. And because that far right column is not a pivot column, I can see that, yes, there is a solution. There is a solution. So because there's a solution to the linear system, that means there does exist an x1 and x2 that make our original equation true. Therefore, 3, 4 really is in the span of uv. Now to find the specific weights, I would just finish solving this linear system. So to finish solving this linear system, I would take R2 and divide it by negative 2, or multiply it by negative 1 half. My bottom row would become 0, 1, 1. And then I would take R1, which is equal to R1 minus R2. My second row would stay the same, and my first row would become 1, 0, 2. And this tells me that x1 equals 2, and x2 equals 1. So those should be the x1 and x2 values. And then, of course, I can test this out. Does 2, does 2 times the vector 1, 2 plus 1 times the vector 1, 0, does that really give me 3, 4? 
and sure enough it does. So to summarize, if I'm given this vector equation, which is really answering the question, is the vector B in the span of UV? That's the same thing as saying, is there a solution to this linear system? And of course, to find out the solution of this linear system, I would, create, I would write this augmented matrix and put it in reduced row echelon form, and that would give me the solutions. So that concludes this video on linear combinations. Thank you.